Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage we've got another Secrets of the XK8. And we're looking in this area, and it's an accessory that's on my desk. Hi folks, today I am looking at our car from a different viewpoint, which means I won't be able to get up really, and I've got a cold bum. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the rear bumper on the XK8 XKR, and particularly the earlier car, uh, because that's what I have. The X100 series has a really unusual rear bumper. Even for today, this is an unusual design. At the time the car was launched, plastic bumpers, which were part of the body, rather than just an addition for safety, were becoming the norm. Cars like the Sierra had seen to that. But we were still at the front end of stylistic bumpers. However, in the X100, we really have something quite unusual. On almost any other vehicle, you're going to find that the rear bumpers are flush with the bodywork, if it's a newer vehicle, or they are over the bodywork, and indeed a kind of cladding, definitely there to protect from accidents and for impact safety. On the X100, the bumper is below the bodywork. Just use your imagination, if this bumper was hit, the whole thing would slide under the car. There isn't any bodywork below it. This bumper isn't attached that way to any bodywork. There's clips and little sliding brackets. And at the back of the car, the back of the car that you can see is truly the back. And yes, there is the tray for the inside of the boot, which is probably 10 inches back from the back of the car and quite central. So really is nothing behind this bumper. Stop it from being nudged forward. In the main, we are looking at something that is very much just a stylistic decision. But it has some really nifty features and effects. On later X100s, this panel is quite flush, so you could draw a line nicely down the bodywork and continue it onto the rear bumper. But on early cars, this feature is really emphasised because the bumper is narrower than the car. So he is looking towards the back of the car. You can see that the bumper is about 30 mil inboard of the bodywork. A very unusual stylistic choice. And I think that style Joyce is, I think, beautiful, but it was probably too much for a lot of people, maybe put them off. Hence, later cars, their rear bumpers grew, as did their front bumpers, actually. But that's how they were originally intended. And it also explains the sort of unusual sill styling we have, because if we follow this line and we transfer it forward, that is why there is a crease here that tapers out to nothing going forward 
on the sills and it almost looks like an error until you read that in the context of that and on later cars as the rear bumpers grew got fatter and wider and more conventional and kind of flush so this line began to look even less obviously connected to the rest of the styling hence the sill extensions we got fitted to blend this back to a more conventional slab-sided look regulars of the channel will remember i did an episode looking at what i carefully described as the second most unusual and probably second rarest accessory on the xk8 which i fitted to some people's interest in a lot of people's amusement and that is the XK8 torch. So a rechargeable unit that slots into a compartment that is otherwise unused in the top of the glove box. It was a rare option at the time because it was a very expensive option for what is a very average torch. It's an even more fantastically expensive thing to fit right now because they're so hard to get hold of to get a torch which by today's standards is plainly pathetic but that isn't the most unusual or comment worthy of the xk8's many many genuine equipment accessories but let's go and look at it now this i believe is the most unusual and possibly the rarest, I've got no way of finding that out currently, of all of the Jaguar XK8, XKR accessories. I say rarest, you can get these. If you want them, you can get them. Um, however, in terms of being installed on the car, I just can't conceive of how there's many installed. So what is this? I'll start off, I'll show you it's genuine. Jaguarness. It's a JLM 20141. It is as yet unopened. So one could say we should stick it on a shelf somewhere, John, and just look after it. Now, I'm a great believer in playing with my toys. This is coming out of the box. And what's more, I'm going to fit it. This is advertised in the accessories catalogue from launch this is a set of security bolts to stop anybody stealing your rear bumper yep you heard right I don't know about you but bumper theft is not a big thing around me so in the box we have a set of instructions and as you can see the instructions are very basic it says remove old bolts and replace with the two security bolts included in the kit so uh, you don't need these instructions that's for sure <laughs> another thing that does come out of this pamphlet though that is interesting is that they also fit the XJ model of the equivalent year and it shows different lengths for the bolts depending on whether they're XKs or XJs front and rear on the XK are the same length so you could use these same bolts this part number for the front bumper if you wish but yeah, essentially that's it. The rest of it is just translations in other languages. It is interesting to note though that it was printed in July 97. So as I say, not reaction. This is a plan up front when this car was launched. So here's the actual kit. As you can see, still sealed, heat sealed in a bag. Never been out. Um, but I'm 
I'm going to break that seal. And what have we got? We've got a puzzle nut adapter. And it's exactly the same style as those used on our wheel nuts. So two dowels welded to the inside of a cylinder with a little metal strip to cover them up and protect them. And the bolt heads have cutouts in the edge to accept those dowels. And these are marked G. So I'm guessing that's the G version of the nut is required in order to undo them. I did go off and have a quick check on, and it's not the same nut as is used on my wheels, which is unfortunate in one way, um, fortunate in another in that it tells me that there is at least some variety in these nuts. Well, despite having absolutely zero fear of my rear bumper being stolen, it's time to actually fit these things. So I'm going to get my car up in the air. You could definitely do this without lifting your car. This is more for ease of sharing the experience. Get my little telescopic stool out. I love this thing. Um, I find all sorts of use for that stool, by the way. I'll maybe put a link in the description below. I get asked about it. So um, you guys can get one if you fancy. Very, very useful for working under a car. You'll need a 19 millimeter socket to undo the old bolts and a 21 to tighten the new ones with a puzzle nut. And in my case, I'll need a 10 mil just because I'm gonna take the tail trim off my exhaust. If you've got standard exhausts, then you'll be able to work around them. But the tail trims on the Adamesh stage one, stage two are quite chunky and they just mask off a little bit too much of the area to easily get at the bolts. Now you can see the head of the bolt just there and I say that's a 19 millimeter bolt and it's going through a bushing through a sort of fiberglass-esque uh, element of the bumper and holds it onto the bumper mounts which are the bits to the left just behind the exhaust so <clears throat> should be a very relatively easy job to remove these I know mine are going to come out because I've had them out previously but when you're undoing them be careful there there's a thing called spinner a spinner is where the bolt turns but it turns the threaded bush on the far side with it and tears it out of the bumper and once you've done that you've got a whole different challenge in trying to remove your bumper i have got a video on that elsewhere but um yeah don't just whack it with a breaker bar ease it and maybe spray a little bit of penetrant oil around if you never had these off while we're in this area, if you look up here, there's a electrical connection on a British car that is just hooked up to a clip. If this was an American car, then that self-same electrical connector wouldn't be on the clip. It'd be plugged into the back of the reflector where there'll be a lamp holder. So should anybody have a need or desire to illuminate their reflectors, that's the cable that you need to attach. So installing these bolts is as simple as it would appear. All I will say is put some sort of copper grease, copper slip, anti-binding compound on these bolts to avoid future spinners. It does present quite an issue and a challenge to get a bumper off if the nut is effectively spinning around on the other end of the uh, bolt. So spray up a bit of copper on them or smear some copper on them. Start them by hand and then tighten using a 22 mil or a 21 mil I should say socket on the adapter key 
and as you can see this is a relatively straightforward job that you could do by the roadside without a lift and without removing the end of your exhaust system if you've got the standard exhaust which is rather narrower and you can easily deflect it out of the way to get good access. The probably is a torque setting for these bolts. I'm not actually aware of it um, and it wouldn't influence me to torque it up anyway because all I want to do is pinch these up so they're not going to come undone. And that's really the job done. In my case, I've got to refit my tail trims. Therefore, tighten the clamp up and get them in the right orientation. But that's because my aftermarket exhaust system. Ta-da! My bumper is now safe. Well, there we are. That's a very simple job to install. If you want to do the same, just search the likes of eBay for um, XK8 security bumper bolts, something like that. And you will come up with something. So eminently doable. Why have I fitted them? Because I'm fascinated by the XK8 and all of the quirky stuff on it. I have got no fear now or before I fitted those that my bumper would ever be stolen. So that does beg the question, why are these available? Or why were these made available? It's a very unusual one. Um, not proud to say it, but I know it's true. Around about the late 80s, early 90s, UK was probably one of the worst countries in the world for car theft of anything that was sporty. Yes, that was focused hugely on the lower range sporty cars. So if you had an XR2 or an XR3 or even an MG Maestro, it was gonna be stolen. And why was it stolen? More or less just for parts, bits and pieces that can be taken off, they're interchangeable, they're higher spec and can be swapped with other people's. That's why when you look at the spec lists for British cars, we have all of the security options as standard. So if you've got an XK8 and it's in the UK, it will have an inclination or jacking sensor. It will have micro dotted um, spray put in the boot cavity and several engine areas to make sure that the car can be identified and the parts can be identified. The alarm system is standard. Locking wheel nuts are standard, and that's all because of this issue. Elsewhere in the world, yes, you can spec those things as options, but they're not standard. This is an option in the UK. I think that the design of the car just gave somebody a bit of a palpitation one day when they recognised that you can remove the rear bumper with two bolts at the side of the road by leaning underneath. And therefore it can be removed relatively easily. For most of the cars it's more involved and certainly in the plastic bumper era, you're typically opening a boot lid, opening a bonnet to remove bumpers. But even that's a bit of a stretch, if I'm honest, because why would anybody want to steal the bumper of an XK8 XKR? If you're a body shop, and you've got a lot of rear-ended XK8s. You might want to go around the street looking for other XK8s, XKRs to take the bumper off to save a few pounds. But you're charging your client. So that doesn't really ring true. And there weren't many people who just bought one of these brand new or had got one two years old who had a little prang and decided they were going to replace their own bumper and go around the streets looking for something similar and the right colour. It just doesn't feel right. This is why I feel this is the oddest of all the XK8's many weird and wonderful accessories. I kind of wonder if somebody had got an awful lot of these puzzle knots and thought, how can we 
come up with a good use that might be of some limited value to some people and we've got something else to market these with i really can't dream up the solution there'll be somebody out there who knows there'll be somebody out there who's working in marketing on uh, the xka xkr let us know it's a fascinating one whether it's sensible and i can't see it or it's completely random and a made-up thing because they needed to have an extra item on their list of accessories so that's another secret of the xk8 discussed if not completely resolved if you want to get in contact with us, then use john at tothegarage.co.uk or use the comments below the video. My final task is to decide where in the car you store the other puzzle nut that's not for the wheels so that you don't lose it, so that a garage can find it. Ah, oh, it's another it's another reason this is such a bad idea. Anyway, I'm not going to show you where I put it because otherwise you'd be able to steal my bumper and we can't be having that. See you soon. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.